everything that I am as a mom, I owe to you for, first of all, you know, me? making me a mom, literally. But uh, The pleasure was, <laughs> was mine, literally. So the other day we were having a conversation and my husband here told me that part of the reason that he was attracted to me and wanted to marry me is because he thought I would be a good mom. And I guess I was under the impression that college me probably was not sending out like good mom vibes. <laughs> <laughs> but you were, yeah, you were sending out vibe, but go ahead. Apparently I was mistaken and somehow in in college me he saw a decent mom. And so I was just curious, especially, you know, like with Mother's Day coming up, a day right. to tell your wife how great of a mom she is. I was just curious, like, what made you think that me, you know, at 18 years old when we met, what made you think that I would be a good mom someday? Well, first of all, of course, you wouldn't notice or pick up on the signs. I think that's something that's instilled in, like, men in general. But you just always kind of had a nurturing spirit. I just saw how you would interact with you know, Corey, your niece and nephew, uh, just kids in general, but also how you took care of your friends, how you protected them um, and took care of them when, you know, late at night when they weren't feeling their best after uh, um, a night out. But it was like those little things that I kind of picked up on and, and appreciated. So like for all the ladies out there that might want to know, what a man such as yourself is looking for. Mm -hmm. So, like, what, like, what does a nurturing spirit like look like in a woman? Uh, I think self selflessness. Okay. Um, always putting others um, before yourself. Nurturing, you know, just being able to care for others, and not only like care for others, but it being instinctive. You know, mm -hmm. you also like taking responsibility for those in close proximity to you i think it's it's like one of those things and and like i remember um the first time i ate like over your house i think we were fresh it was the summer after freshman year and your mom had cooked and you know the food was done and she kind of like gave you a look but it was like instinctive for you to like fix my plate and she kind of gave you a look like, I know you ain't about to. <laughs> Cindy raised you know, me better than shout that. Out, shout out Cindy. <laughs> shout out Mimi. But, um, yeah, it was like those little things. And then I, I think as men, too, we see how uh, the relationship, you know, you have with your father. And also the things that, like I said, like those, in that instance, that little story, just seeing how your mom and dad interacted with each other. Yeah. You know, how, how, um she was nurturing and, and, and very maternal towards, you know, even me. Like, I felt she was a mother figure to me. And I think that that's like one of those things that we as men pick up on and, and, and appreciate. I just think it's so interesting because, of course, as women, like, when we're looking for a potential mate, right, those of us that want kids are wondering like what type of father you know that man would be and looking for a man that has the traits that we would want the father of our kids to have but I just think that it's so interesting that like men are the same way and it sounds like maybe even like more so like looking for those like mom like traits yeah, yeah for sure because I, like from a man's perspective right we always consider we had to be, you know, the breadwinners, the providers, the protectors, everything else. So, like, to an extent, the less we have to worry about our children mm -hmm. and them being well taken care of, the better off we are um, facing the world and outside circumstances, like, with a clear mind. So, it's like, you know, I tell, you know, young guys that come to me for advice, it's like, when it comes to picking women... Pick the one that, <laughs> pick the one that uh, you don't have to worry about. You know, if you had to leave for, you know, this is kind of extreme, but like you had to go off to war, like would the household still be in order when you return? I think, you know, that's one of the 
best advice I can give them. So you don't worry that if you had to go off to war that uh, your your kids would be taken care of? Nah. I mean, I do <laughs> go off to war every other weekend. Uh, this is true. Games. This is so. true. Especially with how these referees are sometimes. But we won't, we won't get into that. Listen, I'm not trying to be fine. Y'all doing a great job. <laughs> so as moms, I feel like we always know that moment, right, when we felt like a mama like whether it happened as soon as we found out you're pregnant or during pregnancy whether it happened shortly after childbirth or sometime you know later as we bonded with the baby we can pinpoint the moment exactly when we felt like a mom and I'm gonna share that moment for me but before like I share I'm curious like when did you start seeing me as a mother? <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Here we go. Nah, it, it was like two instances. Um, I think at the time we were playing in Israel and you had, we found out that you were pregnant. Hi, guys. Um, we are Daquan and Allison Jones and we are over in Israel this Thanksgiving Although it is not a holiday whatsoever here, we are still celebrating. So I look a mess because I've spent all day cooking while he was and traveling. And I was traveling all day. Yeah, traveling back from Paris. But we do have a lot to be thankful for. So what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Um, I'm thankful for my health overall. Um, peace of mind. Um, just overall, the health of my family. Why you got ones. the good angle? Like, can you like give me a good I angle didn't, too? I don't know. I there don't. we go. There we okay. go. Um, the health of my family, my friends, and just God's grace and mercy. You know, it. I understand. Like we fall short, we transgress, and we sin, but we're all, we're we're forgiven. And I think uh, God's grace and mercy is something to be thankful for. I agree. Um, I I don't know. If I like even begin to think about how much I have to be thankful for this year, I'll probably get emotional. This year has been... Um, what word could I use to describe it? Um... I don't know. Taxing? It's been it's been a year. It's been a uh, year for sure. From like my brain tumor diagnosis and going through that to then spending the summer apart and now like getting our prayers answered and literally being you know in a country that we really are growing to love in a great situation i've really been able to see firsthand like god work through me in me and around me so i'm just so thankful for god's grace and his favor thankful for health thankful for prosperity thankful for friends and family thankful to be married to you and thankful that i'll oh, get blush. to see you as a daddy come august because i'm pregnant what? <laughs> yeah, this whole video was a trick, so I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? you can... Ended up going to um to London, mm -hmm. like for a little getaway. I think we went for like what four or five days. Went to London, and at the time, you know, once we found out our journey of home ownership, we went from owning a home, selling, renting. And during that stage, we were currently renting at the time. Actually, we were technically homeless. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. we obviously, we lived in Israel, but we decided to get rid of our apartment in Atlanta and right. just get a storage unit. So we had all of our stuff in storage in Atlanta. We were living in Israel, and then we had decided that when we got back to Atlanta for the off season, we would just figure it out, basically. Yeah, I remember you being up like countless hours on Zillow, just looking at like property. After I found out I was after, pregnant. Yeah, after you told me that she was pregnant. And we were, <laughs> we were in London. We had went out, we had saw Tina the musical, great night, went out to dinner. And it's like, you know, dead of night, kiss good night, all right, babe, good night. Mm -hmm. And like, Two, three minutes later, she's crying hysterically. Like, I felt like they was going to call the neighbors because they thought I was torturing her. I mean, her. I might have been a little bit hormonal. A little bit. Yeah, that's an understatement. <laughs> but, like, boo-hoo crying. And I'm like, I jump up, I turn the lights on. I'm like, yo, what's wrong? Like, And you're like, oh, our baby isn't going to have anywhere to live. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, 
Like, I, and at the time, we had already been house shopping. We had, I think, dwindled it down to, what, two or three. And we had already put an offer in. And you were just bawling hysterically. And I'm like, listen, they're going to accept the offer. And you're like, no, what if, what if, what if they don't? We're going to be homeless. My baby isn't going to have anywhere to live. I'm like, listen, uh, babe, I, I can't control if they accept the offer or not. Like, Listen, y'all. I needed to know that my baby was going to like have some stability, you know, and have a place to call home. Long story short, we ended up getting the house that we wanted, the house of our dreams, blah, 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 blah. Still have that house to this day, so yes. I'll call it in 12. Yeah. But that's when you knew that I was like becoming a mom. Yeah, well, that was the breaking point where I realized that, like, yeah, you were fully crazy. <laughs> mama like, bear. And, had yeah, come yeah, out. yeah. That was like your first mama bear growl. And then the se- <laughs> the second one was um, after Harper was born. You were in um, what is it? Waters, you were in Waters Pavilion. Oh, you love to tell this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like first class for the hospital. So you have your own chef, you have your own, um, what is it like the couch? Yeah, you have like you have like a suite basically, yeah. like in the hospital, and like you have like made to order meals made. from a chef. Basically, like y'all, like. You know, side note, if you are going to Piedmont Hospital and you can, stay in Waters Pavilion. Shout out Piedmont. It was like middle of the night, Harper, it was her first or second night. Yeah, I think she was like two days. Two days old. There was a fight, like a fire alarm goes off. It's like 4 a.m. I jump up because I'm in the suite next door. Jump up, run in. (laughs) Harper, at the time, because it's her second day, we were more comfortable with her sleeping, you know, with us. And she's up. Allison's up, like looking around. Because Harper was in like the little bassinet, remember, yeah. like by the bed. And I had a C-section, by the way, guys. So getting up and down was a little tricky, you know. Right. So you know, I'm just looking around. I go to like the nurses' station. I'm asking like, what's going on? Of course, they don't know. They like, you know, whatever. I come back, and she's fully sat up in the bed, and she's like, "Hand me my baby." <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'm a, you want me to wake up? Hand, just hand me my baby. I handed the baby, and I'm like, and so, like, we both just standing there, and she's like, there could be an active shooter. There could be somebody just, somebody could be in here just kidnapping babies. And I'm like, I doubt that's the case. You never know, okay? I've watched a lot of Lifetime movies. Nah, there's too much Grey's in that. That's um, it. That was, like, the second instance where I was like, okay, yeah, she's, uh, She's fully mama bear at this point. That's so funny. <laughs> like, I mean, for me, I, I did feel like a mom, I will say. Like, basically as soon as I found out I was pregnant. And I think it's because we have been trying to get pregnant and I wanted it so bad. Like, as soon as I found out that there was life inside of me, I felt like a mom. But those moments that he mentioned it definitely, like, stand out to me, too. Especially, like, the night at the hospital because that was the first time I ever felt like, uber like protective of my baby like in that moment like I literally felt like whatever is coming like they're gonna have to like get through me to get to her (laughs) me with my c-section you know open wound and all like I was gonna protect my baby is all I knew and by the way y'all like there was really nothing going on no it was like it was like a fluke it was like uh, I think that was like testing the alarm or something yeah everything was fine (laughs) The lady, like, grabbed a spoon off the cart, and I'm like, what are you going to do with this spoon? But I don't know. And also, you know, I saw the change in you being protective over me because that same, again, that same season, we ended up going to Egypt. We actually went to Egypt, like, remember, it was, like, the day after I told you I was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. I was, like, very newly pregnant. Yeah, so we went to uh, Sharm El Sheikh. You know, another little vacation, and we had rented a boat for the day. And we made these plans before I yeah. found that I was pregnant. By the right. way, so so like I'm snorkeling, I'm just out swimming out, 
And I just look back at the boat and I just see her hand like, <laughs> so, you know, I'm swimming back thinking there's something wrong. And she's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of too far. You still have to, you know, father our children. Listen, so. like when I found out I was pregnant, I felt like, I mean, I already like loved and needed my husband. I obviously want him to be safe. But it's totally different when you're also thinking about like not only yourself, but like your kids. I was like. My kids are not about to grow up fatherless because you wanted to swim really far out in this ocean <laughs> and a shark has attacked you. No, bring your butt back to this boat. Like, we have this baby to raise and I'm not going to have to tell my child that, like, oh, yeah, daddy was snorkeling and a shark came. No, you need to come back to the boat. <laughs> and we can't confirm nor deny if there were, in fact, sharks in the water. There could have been. There could have been. So, obviously, those things happened a while ago. That was what almost four and a half years ago I guess now and now we have two babies it's been a beautiful ride into mm -hmm. parenthood and into being a mom for me are there any memories that like stick out for you in my motherhood journey that have been like your favorite to see it's too many I, I think just being like Harper being one years old and that being the COVID year we just created so many memories like around the house and yeah. just uh just funny things I, I think one of my favorite memories is uh having harper try lemons for the first time <laughs> yeah as a baby we have to have jackson try lemons yeah so you know even though you are flattering me so much with all of your beautiful compliments i know that i am not the perfect mom right and Motherhood is hard, and I don't always know, like, what to do. What is one thing you think that I could work on or do better as a mom, you know, when it comes to parenting our kids? And I promise I won't get upset. Like, I'm taking this as constructive criticism. I would just say, and I know it's like a transition, um, mothering from Harper being an only child to, like, a son. But I think um, just babying Jackson. And I know that that's going to be hard for you. But he's a baby. Right. But, it, <laughs> you know, I, I think it's just setting that precedent of him being independent and being uh, strong, setting that precedent, because, you know, that was the precedent that was set for me. Um, and, and, and it's the same protocol. It's the same way of, of, of building strong men. And I think uh, I think that's probably the only the only thing you don't have to pick him up every time he cry. You know, it's okay if he falls down, and and Man. you know, you don't have to rush over and scoop him up every time he falls. Yeah, like this is probably another video for another day. But I just have to say, like, based on you know what my husband is saying, being the mother of a son is so different. Like. Having a daughter is special, and I always prayed for a daughter, and so I'm thankful that I have my little girl and I got to be her mom first because that was always my prayer is that I wanted a daughter. But, like, raising this little man is, is definitely different. It's definitely different, yeah. and I, I understand that. I do have to, especially now that he's one, he's turning into a little toddler, I have to let him roam and you know become a little boy and eventually a young man yeah i'll try to, to let him go a little bit. Oh, it's all but good. that's my baby y'all okay so what do you think that i do well as a mom since you just you know stuck the knife in my heart and told me that you know i'm uh, terrible at some things i didn't <laughs> say that verbatim, but um i feel like every other aspect of motherhood you excel in you know i think you do a great job um validating our kids feelings you know you do a great job with um expanding like their mindset and understanding of the world and that was always something you know we always talked about we would never uh just take things for face value yeah. if they were inquisitive we would explain it to them regardless of if they could even grasp the concept so I think you do a great job with those things. Well, thank you, honey. You know, for me, like, everything that I am as a mom, I owe to you for, first of all, you know, me? making me a mom, literally. But uh, The pleasure was 
was mine, <laughs> literally. Secondly, just for like being a great partner and supporting me, letting me make mistakes, you know, meeting me with constructive criticism when it's necessary and just like partnering with me in raising these little gremlins as I like to call them because they, they're a handful. Um, for me as a mom, like my goal has always been, I think will always be that I want my children to feel heard and I want them to know that like they have a voice and they can use it. And I just feel like if we're asking them, telling them to use their voice outside of our home, we have to allow them to use it with us as well. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, we want them to be respectful, but, you know, letting them ask questions, letting them say how they feel, allowing them to have feelings, express them, all that stuff. That's something that's always been really, really important to me as a mom. And I'm like, I'm glad that you, you see that, you know, because mm -hmm. I really take pride in raising my kids in that way and you know they're getting older they're one in three but like time really is flying and I can already basically close my eyes and picture them at you know when, when Harper's 12 and Jackson's nine or you know when they're teenagers or even when they're young adults and I'm just curious is like what do you see like what do you see in me as a mom as our kids transition to being you know Big kids and then teenagers and then like grown ups one day. Uh, according to TikTok, we're silky parents. Okay. Um, we're very easygoing, mm -hmm. you know, to an extent. But I just see us being, and it sounds cliche, but like those cool parents. Like, and I can't, I would accredit like our life experiences to us having that mindset because it's like an understanding that everything is. <sighs> okay i guess everything is is temporary everything is fleeting so like yeah. i don't really see us making a big deal of a lot of things i see us allowing them to make mistakes mm -hmm. you know um and i just see us being cool parents that validate their feelings and you know if they ever want to talk communicating effectively with them and you know i'm not a regular mom i'm a cool mom <laughs> yeah, it, it wouldn't be a video without a Mean Girls quote. It would not be a video uh -oh. without a Mean Girls quote. I agree, though. And I always want to be, like I said, I, I, I always try to keep lines of communication open. And so I want to be the one that, you know, my kids tell me everything. And their friends know that, like, yeah, like Harper and Jackson, they're probably going to tell their mom and dad. So we probably... You know, just know their mom and dad are probably going to know, like, whatever is going on. And I want to be that house that, you know, everyone is welcome to come and hang out. Like, it's a safe place for the kids to be. And it's it's not only a safe place for the kids, but also a place where the other parents know that, like, you know, we're going to we're gonna look out for the kids, mm -hmm. you know. And I think also, too, we have to credit our parents for that. You yeah. know, my dad... Even to this day, you know, my dad is like my best friend. You come in, sometimes I'm kiki, cackling. I'm like, like, who are you talking to? Yeah, and I'm like, my dad. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you had that same relationship with, mm -hmm. with your mom. And I think that has, that has carried me, you know, throughout life. And I think my dad has done a great job with allowing me to live through his mistakes. Yeah. And his shortcomings. And that was the one thing, you know, I always learned is it's cool to have friends that you can relate to that are your age. But if all of your friends are your age, they can't tell you nothing but their business. That's true. You know, they can't really tell you how to navigate life, how to navigate emotions or or or, or circumstances. You know, and, and I think that's my goal for my kids is like going to allow you to, you know, make mistakes. But if you listen to me. You might be you might, you be might make off. a few less than we did. Exactly. Well, I thank you, honey, for seeing somehow in college that, you know, I would be the type of woman that you would want to be the mother of your kids. And I thank you for making me a mom. Thank you for my two biggest blessings. Please don't make me a mom to any more. We're good. Well, again, as I said before, the pleasure was <laughs> mostly mine. <laughs> But we'll keep it PG. <laughs>